hello guys so this is going to be a rather uh, short video because uh, I just want to test out that my microphone and my webcam are working correctly and that I will get at least somewhat better sound quality than I got last time um, so what I want to talk about is MongoDB and whether you should or you should not use it for your project because this is uh, a recurring thing right now where a lot of people use this uh, database in places where I think that it should not be used in the first place so um, I'm gonna talk a bit about that so let's start with uh, w what NoSQL databases are <laughs> and I, I guess most of you guys know this um, but let's try uh, get in one of the definitions which a lot of people define them by and th that is the base model which is opposed to the SQL ACID model and you know that ACID stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation and durability so a lot of the ACID model applies solely to transactions and uh, to how consistent and reliable they, your data should be now in NoSQL world they have this thing called base which is basic availability uh, soft state and eventual uh, consistency so uh, obviously the naming comes from trying to inverse the uh, acid around so like you know in chemistry we have acid and base um, but let's talk about you know what that actually means so basic availability is one of the like largest selling points for uh, NoSQL things is because it, it's it means that if one of the nodes fails then we still have the basic availability of the other nodes that are available for us to use and that is great and that's uh, yeah, because the nodes are usually more or less independent of each other in most NoSQL uh, systems that's actually a lot uh, that, that brings a lot of uh, good things if your project needs to be working like 24 7 and if it doesn't matter a lot if some data is missing for example take reddit like imagine that part of the post on reddit was stored on a node and that node is failing right now and so you don't get posts from that particular node but you would get posts from all the other nodes and you probably wouldn't even notice that like imagine in uh, on RPHP like three links aren't there for like half of a day it's not going to be that big of a deal <laughs> compared to like if you know the whole RPHP is not working so basic availability uh, is kind of a good idea when it comes to some kinds of data soft state and to talk about soft state, we first have to talk about um, eventual consistency. Sorry. <laughs> um, in a ACID model, you have uh, consistency and durability. So, if when a transaction is committed, you are sure that the data has been written to disk and that it's there. So. You, you don't get that usually in no SQL databases that you know re rely on the base model because eventual consistency means that usually they are going to cache your uh, the documents that you want to store in memory and then commit them to the database whenever they uh, feel like it uh, for example take Redis they uh, you know the speed of Redis comes from a working uh, like in memory a lot and committing to the disk only like once in a while so it doesn't tend to use disk that much and that's where, where the speed comes from this is also good but it's <laughs> now imagine that you are PayPal or, or some sort of a payment provider and you rely on this and how your life would be hell <laughs> if you didn't have transactions if you know, uh, especially uh, this, uh, if part of you, of your modification to the database execute and part don't, and part gets committed and part not, that's just not going to work for you. And here is where where the soft state comes. The soft state means that the data may or may not be refreshed, and it's never uh, you don't really know in what state uh, like the the database is right now, and that's because of the eventual consistency because you know 
at one point in time it can commit, at the other point of time it will not commit. So, um, this is, uh, now think, think of uh, such thing as nested sets. You know, that um, I'm gonna open up uh, nested sets. Uh, th this is an SQL concept, but just to show the idea of uh, where we would really like to be consistent. So, um, this set model is where you store keys for like uh, like left and right position for each node for to for storing a hierarchy. So, you, you have this closing um, like group, which which has left key one and right key twenty two, and the men's group is left key two and right key nine. So, if you want to find only men's closes, you would search for uh, things that have left key larger than two and right key lower than 9. This, uh, well, yeah, th this probably would never get used in the NoSQL database, but bear with me. So, we, we use this model a lot for storing cat categories, you know, because of in uh, SQL tables. Uh, well, the reason why we do this is because we can uh, get all children uh, and if if you, if you just use adjacency list, like having like the parent ID, we have to have a lot more SQL statements to get you know the whole, the, the whole list, the subtree of children. So the problem with nested sets comes when you want to update it because a lot of numbers have to be moved around and uh, stored. So if I want to insert a new uh, jacket into like men's clothes, I'll, I'll probably have to assign it left position 7 and the right position 8 and then all these positions to the right have to be incremented by 2. So, now usually this is done in a transaction. So if something, uh, because transactions, uh, since they are isolated, they can increment, they, they usually if you like are adding two uh, sub-jackets concurrently, the database is going to resolve it for you and they are going to be added without you know any disturbances now in a uh, in a uh, no sql world let's take mongodb since we don't have isolation if my jackets uh, start increasing things and moving numbers around and uh, at the same time i have i have a second uh, connection that's trying to insert a different item into this model and it's moving those numbers around they are going to interfere with one another and they are going to cause problems and basically break your tree and the, the, w these things are actually very hard to debug as because when you're doing stuff alone when you're developing it you're usually using like one connection and you're doing everything like from one concurrent user so you don't uh, have a good grasp on how concurrency will influence your database and you know the transactions you run. Now, there is no so, so this would not be possible in NoSQL world, uh, especially like in the MongoDB world, because uh, if you would have like two people adding uh, categories at the same time to your table, uh, your collection, that would break it. So obviously we have hierarchies we can store things hierarchically. And I'm going to talk about that in the second second. So um, let's move uh, to why I th uh, MongoDB is becoming very popular because it seems like it's promising people an object-oriented approach. Well, to, to be honest, SQL actually gives you a more object-oriented approach because columns are like defined uh, properties of your objects. They aren't, you know, change. You, you know, you can't just randomly add a field in, into an uh, SQL database. So it's much more consistent. While, um, yeah, but but Mongo allows you uh, to store nested objects, and it feels like it's, you know, built-in RM. So, and a lot of people don't understand. Uh, the concepts of where are the strong points of MongoDB and here's where the strong point comes. If MongoDB is awesome, if your documents, like if the stuff you store don't have a defined scheme. So for example, um, say I want to inventorize everything that I have in my house. Uh, so there is like this bad uh, Nintendo 3DS and I don't know, this cheap 
painting sort of thing that I got, and the door. So all these objects have different properties. They, you know, if I had a table and I called them the, its stuff, it would have to have like a whole lot of columns to store this. I could like create an another table could properties and you know just add stuff to that and have a foreign keys all over the place, but this would work much better in MongoDB because I would just say like find if I would cover this, I would just say like find me the stuff that has color white, and I don't care if it's door, if it's like in my bed, if it's like um, a power socket if it's white give it to me and then I'll get it this would be awesome for this pretty much everything else you can use a skill for <laughs> uh, well I'm, I'm gonna get to map reduce in a second and I'm gonna say why that's good but let's um, let's uh, like if you have a class and the class uh, defines some uh, you know the main model for you for example like a client or uh, some item or I don't know like a game or whatever usually you have a defined set of parameters for that and you can store that in SQL and the bad thing is that you have relationships and joins where you, you for example when a user leaves a comment you can uh, and you, you can have the comment just referencing that user and here is where a lot of developers get Mongo wrong because I like I've checked speaker deck on like MongoDB to SQL comparisons by other people and I think people have no idea what they are talking about so let's take a look at uh, this one so there's this uh, guy over here and uh, he proposed modeling uh, your uh, blog in MongoDB. So this is the first screenshot. He is. I'm just. Uh, let me make it full screen. All right. All right. So. Um, mm, no, sorry. Uh, I'll go, go back. Um. So uh, this is how your blog post model would look in SQL. Yes, you would have a user, an article, and tag, comment, category. And there are relationships between those. If this doesn't look like object-oriented design to you, then I don't know what does. So here's what he suggests doing for Mongo to simplify this. Because obviously you, it seems like you have too many entities. So there's this user that's referenced by the article and by the comment and each article has a tag, category, comment, stuff like that. So there are just two oh sorry, two types of documents and the reference. So there is some random image and yeah, comments, username, Nero, comment, this will uh, for sure light up the room. So this is your basic document in um, a meta document in Mongo. Um, and uh, the silent point is that you can select this embedded document and uh, you can immediately send it to your templating engine and your templating engine will uh, render it for you and since it has this nice uh, hierarchical sort of structure it's really going to be easy for, the for you to use it in the templating so just uh, comments render, stuff render. Now think about data duplication because first thing is like you have your username copied into each of your comments so now let's see the scenario where we have like uh, the option of a user changing his username so when your user changes uh, his username now you have to go through and update all the sub documents uh, that reference th that you know that are users and change the username from Nero to say Rackney how would you do this? Because you don't have, if you if you don't have like, if your all documents are random like this, you don't know which of the documents are actual users. And to do this, to know you know which documents to update, now you have to have a, a scheme that will define where your um, which part of your sub documents are going to define your users, where, where the usernames are being uh, stored. And now you're basically inventing SQL because you're taking the document uh, model and now you're adding a scheme to it and the whole idea is that it shouldn't have one like by default so 
this obviously would result in a lot a lot of queries because you have to go through all of those documents and uh, update stuff and now think about nested comments if you have nested comments and you are using this you are dead because you didn't know the depths of each comment now you have to select every single document from your collection recursively go through the comment tree and update every single uh, you know update every single uh, instance of the username and then save the comment back if this sounds like fun to you and something that's easier to use than uh, running a simple update comment in mysql then use this but this is a bad idea don't ever code blogs or what don't put relational data into my MongoDB because you're gonna have some bad time. All right, many to many is even worse. So many to many is just putting an array of items in a subdoc. That that seems pretty logical, but again, what if you because usually you have a many to many relationship which is not exclusive. So. Uh, Usually, you would have like, uh, let's say I have a many-to-many -many relationship with, um, like let let's let, let's say let's ha say we have like video or like channels on YouTube users, and there's a many-to-many -many relationships like which user is uh, subscribed to which channel. If we store for each user document a copy of a sub document of the channel that he is subscribed to this is you know this is going to result in huge data duplication so mongodb comes with um, a way of doing this which for some reason this particular uh, developer is not using is using db refs a db ref is basically um, i'm going to show it to you A dbref is oh I will open that in PHP so it's not it's not what I'm looking for. <laughs> Can't find this. Oh, I found this reference. Mm, all right, never mind. I'm just going to tell about. It. So basically, it's a structure that you can put and reference a, a, an item from a different collection. So you put like the collection name and item ID from there, and it's going to be. Re and when you select the the document that has this reference, the reference will be immediately resolved to the actual document. This is nice, but this happens on the client. So it's actually. A hidden query that's been, uh, you know, sent from your client back to the database to retrieve those sub documents. So if you have like a good number of those in different places, you're gonna have a huge amount of sub uh, of you know not sub queries of additional queries ran, and you probably don't want that. And actually, I hate the idea of having hidden queries, like you know, queries that you aren't actually in control of. That that's pretty bad. And since you know it, it can't do joins and it has to resolve this on the client, this is going to slow you down quite a bit. So uh, yeah, so you uh, end up either with duplication that you can't, uh, th that's very hard to update later on, or you end up using dbrefs, which is much slower than a join. So uh, what's this? All right, so we have, yeah, this is just some random stuff he's talking about. Migrating to documents. Yeah, I'm just gonna stop uh, looking at this right now. So um, now let's talk about the API, because MongoDB API and like MongoDB altogether had some WTF moments that I had while I was developing you know, a driver for it and tried to shoehorn it into like the general database interface. So the first thing is the fields method. Uh, MongoDB projection. So you, you, by using a projection, you can get a sub document. Uh, yeah, this is 
basically it's the same thing where you say uh, I'm I hope this is what I'm to what I wanna talk about in a sec because I think I found no <laughs> nah in a second uh so basically it's the same thing as when defining fields that you want to select uh, uh in like SQL which is like a usual thing because especially when you're uh storing huge documents you don't want to you know retrieve all of that if you just want to get some property just to mi minimize network use so uh So, now, you have that thing that, you know, by default, it's, uh, you know, if you, ah, yeah, so by default, it's always going to return the ID, the, you know, underscore ID thing, and uh, um, you can obviously disable it, how it says here, like, uh, underscore ID, you know, colon zero, so you're just telling it not to return, uh, but the first time this this was really like WTF because I didn't expect it to return uh, you know ID when I you limit the field. So basically, if you just say that I want to like some property of a nested sub document, it's still going to return the parent document's ID. So it's kind of different document that you expected. It's a small issue, but I'm just gonna start building from here. <laughs> So, uh, the second thing uh, that I don't like is that it's, you, in SQL, when you define uh, like fields that you want to return, they are going to be returned in the correct order like uh, of, you, of the definition. So, when I say that I want to select like item and quantity, in SQL, it's, you know, actually going to be in that order in MongoDB, when you, so it, it's going to be in the same order as it is in a document so it's not really useful so let's go just gonna go and try it out because usually if you like have like two if you want to return like two fields I know it's a problem but I was just like really just return them in the same order <laughs> This is not a huge deal. Like, if I request like item and quantity, I don't want a quantity to come first. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna stop writing about this. Which, which this was just the last thing that I had. All right, now let's talk about the real problems. Uh, the first real problem is uh, this: that if you have some complex SQL query, uh, SQL, complex logical query. Let's uh, try. I'm just gonna or t t I'm gonna type uh you know wow this is slow starting all right come on so uh I'm just go I'm just gonna type some pseudo pseudo SQL sort of thing here so let's say uh, let's see let's say I wanna uh, select all items that have like uh, price equals five or name equals door uh, I don't know let, let's say like and price larger than eight or weight Lower than all right. I'm just coming up with uh, uh, stuff. All right. So basically, we have like or and then an and and another or. So uh, there's this problem in MongoDB that it's you know in my scale if you have indexes on all of these fields, this query is gonna be like this. Bam, bam. This is just gonna select it in a second. Now in MongoDB, this is going to require a scan of every node. Uh, it's basically uh, what what we to, uh, say like a full table scan next SQL basically it's gonna try each document that you have for this so it's not going to use indexes 
and there is like this known issue that's not been closed and fixed yet so MongoDB will only use indexes if you have uh, stuff that's a disjunction of conjunctions which is the only uh, plausible way of defining uh, conditions is this like you have ors no sorry syntax Uh, like you have a set of ors and here you can have like a equals 5 and c equals 8 so that's all you can have so etc so all you can have is uh, a set of end conditions which are connected by or conditions so uh, thankfully uh, mass tells us that every logical statement can be converted to that definition so let's try our statement here in our case it's going to be like this price equals 5 or name equals door and price larger than 8 or name equals door and weight less than 100 so unless your RM will do this conversion for you or you can convert your statement like that by yourself you are not going to use indexes and your app is going to be slow so uh, by the way PagePixel does this for you I actually spent a lot of time to make this in an efficient way so good as for me <laughs> but um, this is not a good this why didn't they do this because this is not like you know rocket science it's basically your typical mass functions because you know you treat or as a plus and and as a multiplication so bam and you're you just you know multiplying and adding logical statements and you're got it why didn't they do it i don't know this is beyond me so i actually had to spend a lot and a huge lot of time uh, to get this optimized because this comes into play a lot oh because you you can't uh, actually have like there, there are a lot of problems when you know or and ands are simple but when negation comes into play you have to use De Morgan's laws for example if there was not here uh, like this the whole design is going to be a lot bigger because a uh, conjunction of a disjunction is a disjunction of a negation of a conjunction of negations <laughs> so uh, like not a and b equals to not not a or not b like this and you can like expand the statements from that but <sighs> anyway um, what else? Uh, I talk about fields, talk about this thing. Uh, damn. There was some other thing that I really, really hated about Mongo. All right. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And now, um, let's talk more about those many to many relationships. That, you know, you have sub documents in your documents. So let's say I have. Uh, uh, like this document that has like I don't know like games so this is an array and there's gonna be games here so like name Zelda name Mario so sort of a management relationship now the API doesn't give me a good uh, way to unset a specific uh, item in this array by index. So, why does it matter? It really matters uh, for updating your documents. Like, imagine if you have an RM, if you're building an RM, or like, and you have this, like, all right, so you have this, uh, like, a game collection, and there are these games in it. And uh, the user tells, all right, I don't want to play Luigi's Mansion, so please remove that from a list of games. So what, what you would want to do is you'd want to like just say, like, 
remove from games where index is 2. You can't do this. You have to uh, define a, a document by its property. So you have to say like remove from games where name equals Luigi. Uh, and that's fine as long as you have this. Now imagine like if instead like of Zelda, Mario and Luigi you would have like this huge sub documents in here. Like this like huge sets. And they would differ like in like a very simple one property. So if you want to remove any of that, uh, any of those from the array of games, then you in your query you have to put all the information of uh, about that sub document. So basically, you would ha you have to specify the whole sub document as the condition. So not, and then since it, since you know it, it it would have to go and check your each of your documents in there to check whether it matches it and then it would pull it. So no consistent API for pulling objects from array. It actually it drove me to the point where uh, when when updating these arrays, I would basically re uh, re, re uh, set the whole array. So I would just put you know the existing documents back in because there is just no other consistent way of doing this and this is what really you know it's really bothering me that lack of consistency at the end because now let's talk about sites that would re work re really nice with MongoDB Reddit and YouTube alright YouTube maybe not but Reddit. Reddit is an awesome site for MongoDB because as I already stated basic uh, availability is good for it. If you lose some data, someone's link, there is no real problem because you know no one's gonna really notice it, except for the from for the guy who posted it. So there is like zero problems coming out from there. Um, there are stuff like um, you know the documents. Very uh, doesn't use that, but they could you know uh, they have like this text post and you know link post. If they uh, if at some point add the, like different post types awesome you know that would fit in mongodb model so mongodb is good as long as your your sub documents aren't relationships so sub documents are nice but if you want to store your relationships there you're basically you know you're in a lot of trouble so um i'm going to make a detour from here i'm just going to talk about you know other databases you know SQL databases that i've seen um i'm Actually, maybe not. I, I'm gonna leave this for later. Yeah, I th I, I think I'm gonna yeah, leave this for later. So um, yeah, yeah. I I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you think you know, I, if you used uh, Mongo on any project and it was nice for you, I'd love to know that. Uh, especially you know if it was a small project and you have of uh, you know a good point why. Uh, you know, you use that instead of SQL. But um, yeah, well, uh, see you guys next time. Uh, thanks for listening to my rants. <laughs> Bye.